Looks like the fire is dying down a little bit. I better add some kindling. I mean, it's got some good, uh, you know, it's got some good coals underneath, but hey, I like a nice big fire. Now, I'm relying upon past experience here, aren't I? I'm relying upon the principle of induction. In my experiences in the past, if I add some kindling to a fire, it gets bigger. Look at that, didn't take very long. And you can't add just kindling anywhere, right? I can't add kindling over here and expect the fire to start. No, I have to put the kindling where the coals are hot, where it's exposed to some air, but it's not gonna get blown out. There already has to be a fire going, right? I can't just put kindling in a space and then poof, there goes the fire. No, I have to rely upon my past experiences. What's happened in the past, what's worked in the past, is gonna work in the future. This is the principle of induction. Mm -hmm. Roughly stated, or the most simply stated, the future will resemble the past. What has happened tells us something about what will happen and tells us really reliably what will happen. You can't do anything in the physical sciences <laughs> without using the principle of induction. You can't go camping without using the principle of induction. We use the principle of induction all the time. You guys use it when you turn on your computers. None of you turned on your computers and expected them to, I don't know, disintegrate into bubbles or, you know, become conscious and tell you how to change your life. <laughs> That's coming later. <laughs> now, you, uh, you knew, right, that since, you know, from all the times that you turned your computer on in the past, you knew that it would turn on this time. There might be some room for error, right? Maybe your computer's broken or, you know, um, I don't know. Maybe the power goes out, right? What, there could be outside factors, sure. But you're real sure. When you turn on your computer, it's going to turn on. You'll be able to use it. To do that, you use the principle of induction. Hmm? So nobody here... Nobody watching the video and nobody making the video seriously believes that the principle of induction is false or that it's not reliable, right? There are regular patterns to the universe. Right? We've seen this since the ancients. Hmm? Well, if you know, we think that this principle of induction is, is, is justified, we have to reject Hume's, uh, uh, Hume's uh, argument. Right. His conclusion is that the principle of deduction is not justified. That's tough to accept. It would be really weird if it were just true and happens to work, but we didn't know why. <laughs> or that just worse, that it just wasn't justified. We don't think we get reliable information from unjustified sources, right? The magic eight ball. The magic eight ball is not a good way to make your decisions. So, uh... Well, if we're going to reject Hume's conclusion, we got to reject at least one of the premises from which the conclusion is derived. And rejecting, we've seen this already before, right? And this is kind of old hat at this point. If you reject a premise, right? And we've already seen the argument in the last video. You, sh you should have seen the video for the video quiz. Okay? You have these premises for the conclusion that the principle of deduction is not justified. Well, if you're going to reject that conclusion, you have to reject one of the premises from which it comes. But rejecting a premise commits you to its contradictory. So let's take a look at the premises one by one, and let's take a look at the contradictories and figure out what are we going to do to justify the principle of deduction.